I'm Atuba Judge and welcome to the month of July. Hey, we have just stepped in to the second half of the year 2023. And let me tell you something. God is on course for everything that he has destined for your life this year. And that's why the best thing you can do for yourself is to connect yourself with him. The Bible says, anyone who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. You remember last month we dealt with entering into his rest. And I ended by emphasizing what he said. If today you hear his voice, today if you will hear his voice, voice. Brothers and sisters, God's plan for every one of his child is that we hear, not just hear, but we live by his voice. Praise God. Listen, it's going to be a great month. I know because the spirit of God is with us. I'm going to be sharing with you wonderful things this month like we do. Praise God, trusting that there will be a supply of God's Spirit in every message that we share. I believe God this month, lives will be transformed. The oppressed will be made free. Sicknesses will disappear. Status will change for good. I'm believing God for everything good in your life not just this month but for the second half of this year praise god and every month is going to be greater than the last greater than the last praise god are you ready to call forth your daily bread now you should have so much enthusiasm in your heart because god is going to do as we ask if you are ready join me right now as we by faith why did i say by faith because that's what the Lord commanded us to do. So now we are agreeing with what the Lord said we should do. I told you on this broadcast, he said to me, every day of this broadcast, you must lead my people to make requests for their daily bread. Because he, he said it. He said, pray, give us this day our daily bread. But how many of you truly pray with understanding? in your heart so this is a, his way of helping you so join me right now as we declare say father i demand right now my daily bread it is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god now as simple as that is you have made a demand and it is left for him to answer that demand. The beauty of this is he asked us to make this demand. So why wouldn't he answer? If we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know we have our petition granted. He told us to pray like this. And we have prayed like he told us to pray. So what does that tell you? He's heard us. And because he's heard us, I surely know, praise God, because he can't deny himself. He can't say, I didn't hear you. No, praise God. I surely know miracles are going to take place in your life today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I'm seeing someone, you are, thank you, Lord. You, you have this pain um, on this, this front bone. Now, I, I don't know the medical name. Uh, I can't say I'm very sure right now, but uh, between your knee and your feet, the front, you feel a kind of pain in that place. And it causes weakness in you sometimes. You are being free from that oppression right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, any pain you have in the leg, get ready for a miracle right now. Get ready for a miracle. If you have any pain in your leg, just get ready right now. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. A miracle is going to take place in your life right 
now. And he doesn't take anything from God. Praise God. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to see that oppression go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you right now because that's what I'm instructed to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You that have that, that pain I was talking about, you're already healed. You can check. You can check. You are already healed. And I want to hear from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray right now for every pain in your body. Pain in the waist. Pain in your ankles. Pain in your knees. Weaknesses of your joints. I command every pain to leave you now. In Jesus' name. Be healed and be free. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you something. Now, we are just going to, because of the things the Lord is telling me to share, you know, this month, we are just going to be open to the Spirit of God. Now, you know, regular, I've told you this many times, when we teach, there is, there is a supply of the Spirit, but then we are conscious of getting information across to you first. You see that? Because if you have the information in your heart, it will generate healing. It will generate a miracle. If you understand the message, miracles will happen. Now, sometimes people are too concerned about just receiving miracles. But when you get, the, when you get healing, you will still fall sick. And you start looking for a way that, you know, you know sometimes, and I know, I know people do this sometimes, especially when I begin to walk um, by word of knowledge. Some people begin to pray, oh Lord, let him mention my case, let him mention my case. Now, that itself is limiting. How about you understanding that the same grace is at work in you? So you don't have to wait for me or any other minister to mention your case. You just rise up and get healed. Praise God. Now, that's what the teaching of the word does. And I'm aware also that while you're receiving the message, the power of God is available to heal. I know that. He's available to do miracles in your life. I know that. Because you have come in, you're coming under the environment of the Spirit. And when you come under the environment of, your, of, of the Holy Spirit, anything can just happen. Now, there are people who get healed, but they don't know. So they still carry the mentality of the sickness. Oh, yes. Yes, that's the truth. I've seen cases like that. They were, they've been healed already, but they don't know because they've been so used to getting sick. Now, that was exactly the case with the man by the pool of Bethsaida. Now, that's what the Lord told me. The Lord told me, did you notice? I, I didn't pray for that man. I didn't heal that man. The Lord told me, they said, I didn't heal that man. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So I'm like, but Lord, you, you, you're the one. That told him, get up, take up your bed. He said, I come shall There is no beautiful thing as fellowshipping with the Lord, brothers and sisters. He opens your heart to truth. Now, sometimes when you say these things, you're like, but don't be talking like that because you cannot prove it from scriptures. Now, that's what your problem has always been. You have used the scriptures to block your fellowship with him. Meanwhile, he expects you to haven't seen the scriptures to find him. Sometimes when you tell people things, say, where, where is that in the Bible? Huh? <laughs> and now, of course, I'm not, I'm not coming to tell you something that it's outside um, the, the, outside the scriptures even. But when we say scriptures, people don't even understand the concept of the scriptures. So they think the scripture is it. That's why I keep saying that thing. When I say it, you know, sometimes people get confused. Like, what, why would you say such a thing? When I say it, that the Bible is not the word of God. You know, people will like, well, what do you mean? But there's something I'm trying to get to your mind. 
There is a closeness that many of us have carried for many years because of the religiosity that we have built around our mind. You see that? So now, when, when the, even when the Holy Spirit is trying to open you up to new things, you can't take it. Why? Because your mind is blocked. So I said the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it, and what became of their lives. Praise God. So it gives us this blueprint that, look, if I follow what these guys followed, the question now is, what did they follow? See that? So I read in the Bible, Abraham, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. The word of the Lord came to Isaac. The word of the Lord came to Jacob. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to this. The word of the Lord came to that. And now, instead of me to go look for the word of the Lord, I now get stuck with the word of the Lord that came to all these men. And I start quoting them in my life. Brothers and sisters, that's not faith. That's not faith. That's why things are not working for a lot of you. That's why things are not working consistently. It works today by the grace of God. Tomorrow you think, wow, it works. You want to die? It doesn't work. The reason it didn't work or it doesn't work again is because you are not doing it in faith. Faith is not the Bible. No. Faith comes by hearing not by reading by hearing and what do you hear brothers and sisters you don't hear a book you read a book you hear a voice so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god praise god actually hearing the voice of god that's the only source of faith that exists brothers and sisters apart from the voice of god there is no faith now you look through the scriptures and you begin to find out that everyone who walked by faith received the voice of God. Everyone who walked by faith hear the voice of God. Now you want to walk by faith and you're stuck with reading the Bible. The Bible is a blueprint. But that's not all the word of God that exists. It's not only the things you read in the Bible that God has said. There are things God has said. There I've said this and I've said this. This is the reason Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit. So I was sharing something with you. I said, the Lord said to me, I didn't heal that man. And I was like, no, you, you went there, you met him. And then he now told me, look at the story again. So I went look, looking at the story. Now, now, now this is how we study. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So I went looking, looking at this story again. And then, Jesus walked up to this man. He didn't pray for him, and they had this dialogue. And Jesus said, do you want to get well? And the man said, eh, it's just that I don't have anybody. When, when the angel comes to stay up the water, nobody is there to take me in. Before I even rolled myself, someone else had gotten in. And the, so the man knew that people were getting healed in that place. But now, what he didn't know, and, and he said, this is one Thing that sometimes the law of first occurrence can be limiting. God really need thinkers. God need people who are ready to expand their minds and experiment. So they felt that when they see the water is stirred, somebody jumps in and the person gets healed. What they don't know is that the presence of of the angel that comes to stir that water, everybody could have gotten healed. But they kept their focus on the water. So this man has been there for 30, I think 38 years. And I call mashallah. <laughs> this is exactly what happened. So the Lord said to our Lord, <laughs> you know what David said? The Lord said to my Lord, yeah, that's what I'm doing to you now. So the Lord said to my Lord, go to that place. There is a man who's been there for 38 long years. 
I've healed him, but he doesn't know. So Jesus went to this man and said, do you want to be well? He said, yeah, nobody, nobody. <laughs> he just said, get up, take up your bed and go home. That's all he said. He didn't say, now get up and receive your healing. He says, get up, take up your bed and go. The man got up and realized he had strength in his leg. How long he has been that way with strength in his legs, but he didn't know it. And that's what happens to a lot of people. God have done the miracle, but you don't know. That's why I say to you, when you, when you watch this broadcast, learn this. Exercise yourself. See, when you're listening to the word of God, you must listen with expectations. You must listen with expectation. If there was any kind of sickness in your body and you are listening to the word of God from an anointed person, don't just stay there and be cracking your head saying, mm, he's making sense, he's making sense. What sense is he making to you? Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So don't be there saying, he's making sense, he's making sense. Open your heart to receive the spirit that is coming. That's what you do. Now, if you open your heart to receive the spirit that is coming, guess what's going to come to you? Faith is going to come to you. How? Because the word of the Lord will come. While I'm speaking here, you will begin to hear the voice of God. Because that's the prayer I pray every day. I say, Lord, let them not hear me. I'm only creating an atmosphere that you will speak to them. So you're listening to me. And I begin to talk about the subject. But suddenly, you begin to hear a voice inside your heart. You begin, that's the spirit of God. You begin to hear him say, you remember I was telling you this thing two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. So look, what exactly were you saying to me? I was trying to get it across to you that that thing you've been looking for, it has been found. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That's how miracles take. And, and I hear the Spirit of God say this to you. That's how miracles are going to be taking place in your life from henceforth. Now, not that you, oh God, I need a miracle. You are going to be realizing that the miracles have already taken place long ago. <laughs> Praise God. All those times you prayed, you think God didn't hear you. He heard you. I remember sometime one lady. She had called me up and said, oh, I, uh, I have this uh, disease and, and, and stuff. And while she was talking to me, the, the word of the Lord came to me. She said, she doesn't have it. I said, how do you know you have it? She said, oh, I went to the doctor. I did some tests and this is what they found out. And that's the result I've been carrying, you know, and I did it another time. And then he confirmed it. So since then, I've just not been able, you know, I just don't want to see that result again. So I said, but God has healed you. You don't have that disease. Ah, you know, pastor, you know, and I said, okay, you know what you're going to do? You're going to take a test. I'm not going to pray for you. You're going to take a test. Now you see that you have been healed. And she went and took the test and realized that the sickness was gone, completely free. Oh, pastor, thank you, thank you, thank you. God answered me. I didn't pray. I didn't pray. Praise God. Because now, when did God heal her? You see, whenever you are listening to the word of God, being communicated by a preacher that has the anointing of God's spirit on his life, anything can happen. Whether you know it or you don't know it, Anything can happen. So why don't you take advantage of times like this and exercise yourself? You finish listening to this word, whether we talk about healing or not, you just get up and say, thank you, Father, for your word that has entered me today. Hallelujah. And you begin to exercise. You'll be amazed. You can begin to do it now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you. Oh, I see already this month is going to be loaded with your grace and power. I see it. <laughs> oh, we give you praise for everything your spirit is doing in the lives of those that are listening and watching. Thank you for miracles that are taking place in their lives. 
We give you praise. This month, your hand of grace for witnessing will be in them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow, but I promise you this month is going to be mind-blowing. God bless you.